Hey guys, Vijay here, Citrix and Azure Architect. Let us uh, discuss today about another concept, uh, which is uh, Azure Network Security Groups. So before we see how do we actually create a network security group, let us try to understand what is the purpose of network security group on, in, on an Azure environment. Right, uh, network security group is also called as NSG, stands for network security group right so network security group uh, is is it can be compared uh, to your uh, firewalls right so like how you have firewalls in your on premises environment now the firewalls on the on premises environment the purpose is to kind of restrict traffic or allow traffic which means that every firewall that which you deploy will have some rules right we call them as firewall rules and these firewall rules will define what traffic is allowed to pass or what traffic is denied it could be uh, the traffic that which is entering into the environment or it could be the traffic that which is leaving the environment so right, so you write a, a number of rules within the firewall, which basically defines what is your security, uh, what are your security um, uh, restrictions are, right, when it comes to the traffic. Now, similar to your firewall, Azure provides you a service called as network security groups. Now, network security group is nothing but, it's a service that filters the traffic. It filters the traffic now now what traffic it will filter it will filter the traffic that which is coming into the azure environment and it filters the traffic going out of the environment now in order to attain this what you do is within the network security group you write rules and then we call them as nsg rules now, if you want to restrict the traffic that which is getting into the environment, you write incoming network security group rules. And if you want to go and restrict traffic to whichever is going out of the Azure environment, you go and write outgoing NSG rules. Now, as I said, each rule, uh, in the sense, uh, each NSG can have multiple rules. They could be part of either incoming or they could be part of your outgoing rules. Now, how does this rule look like? What are the contents of the rule? What are those things that which you go and write within an NSG rule? Like any firewall rule that which you go and define, it will have a source from where the traffic is coming. And it will have a source port on what port the traffic is originating. And then it will have something called as destination, where it is reaching. And it will have destination port, on what port it is trying to communicate to the destination. What protocol it uses, whether it is TCP, whether it is UDP, or it is ICMP, or it could be any. And then it defines action. Now here action is what is that you want to do with this traffic. Whether you want to allow it or you want to deny it. And every rule that which you go and write will have a priority. Which gives a weight to the rule that which you are going to go and put in place. So the lower the number, the higher the priority, which means that if you define a rule with, let us say, 300, and there's another rule with 200, which conflicts the priority 300, then priority 200 will take precedence over 300. So the lower the number, the higher the priority. And then you've got a name for identification purpose and, of course, a description. 
So any rule, whether it could be an incoming rule or it is an outgoing rule, you go and put these values. Now, which basically helps your NSG to understand what needs to be allowed, what traffic needs to be allowed or what traffic needs to be denied. Okay, so you created an NSG and you defined your incoming and outgoing rules. But until and unless you assign this to something, it is of no use. Until and unless you associate this NSG to something, it is of no use. Now, what are those components to which you can assign an NSG? What are those components to which you can assign NSG? NSG can be associated to one subnet and the other one is network interface cards of VMs. So you create an NSG, you go and associate that to you a subnet, which means that the traffic entering into that subnet will go through the scrutiny of the rules that whatever are part of this particular NSG. And if you assign that to a network interface card, if the traffic is getting into the net into the VM through your network interface card, then all the incoming rules will be validated. Similarly, if the traffic is going out of the subnet, then if it has got an NSG tag, then the traffic will be validated based on the rules that whatever are written in the NSG itself, so as your network interface card. So your network security groups will act as a, what do you call it, as filter. You can also compare it with a firewall. Of course, there is Azure firewall, which is a different concept but you are attaining that future of restricting the traffic or allowing the traffic. So one NSG can have multiple incoming rules, can have multiple outgoing rules. But when it comes to your subnet, you can associate only one NSG can be associated, which means one subnet can have only one NSG associated. Similarly, a network interface card can have only one NSG associated. Okay, we'll stop here. We'll get back. We'll get in touch in another topic sometime soon on the NSG itself. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Have a great day. Bye.